a warning about a lost generation of children as schools remain closed amidst the pandemic. An awful lot of children tell us that they have almost given up on thinking that they will come out of lockdown. Yet more travel restrictions for England and supermarkets are being urged to do more to tackle plastic pollution. I'm Matt Soans. This is the Lunchtime News from Radio News Hub. A lost generation of children. That's a stark warning about what might become of many young people who've missed out on school over the past month because of the pandemic and still have no idea of when they'll be allowed back into the classroom. With the pandemic still raging across the country, the government is now under pressure to set out exactly what the plan is to get children in England and across the UK back to learning with their peers. Kevin Pashby reports. Classrooms have again fallen silent over the past month after a surge in coronavirus cases across the country forced a return to learning online for most children. Many have now missed out on significant amounts of time in school over the past year or so, and we still don't really have an indication of when schools will reopen. Closures haven't just hit young people's education, it's also done damage to their social lives and their mental health. Because of the lockdown, many can't go and see friends, and some are now dealing with issues around confidence. Dr Badanka Debeka works for the Royal College of Psychiatrists. I see some children, young people who are really relieved not to be in school because they've really struggled when they've been in school, for example, children with autism or marked social anxiety. So for them, it's actually been a relief. On the other hand, there's plenty of other children, young people who are really struggling with a lack of structure and a lack of support. But it's the hidden ones that worry me the most. It's the ones that I'm not seeing and the ones that none of us are seeing. And then there's there's a whole host of children just being lost to this pandemic, perhaps who are being abused in the home, who are living in really traumatic circumstances, that have just lost contact with their teachers and lost, lost contact with other sources of support. Some senior Tory MPs are now calling on their government to set out a roadmap for the reopening of schools. The Education Secretary is being called to answer an urgent question on the subject in Parliament later today. Day. Children's Commissioner Anne Longfield says she wants to see a coherent plan from the government, the pledges of extra support once children are back in school. There's a danger that there's a group of children here who have been through some traumatic experiences who will need really quite intensive support and the worry is that if we let them slip from view then they may never recover from this period of time. It certainly will mean a really boosted recovery plan and real investment from government in mental health support for children when they do come back into school. And that's something that is growing and is in place, but needs to be rocket boosted. The government says it wants to get children back in the classroom as soon as it's safe to do so. Last week, the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, appeared to back calls for teachers to be high up on the priority list for the coronavirus vaccine. I'd very much like to see them, uh, you know, uh, up that list uh, when there is uh, those people who are most vulnerable to coronavirus have been uh, vaccinated. Teachers have been told they'll have two weeks notice before schools reopen, although a return is now unlikely after the February half-term break. Next, people arriving into England from coronavirus hotspots could be made to quarantine in hotels to limit the spread of the virus. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is talking over the proposals with senior ministers today, with more details expected to be revealed later. The new restriction would come on top of a requirement to present a negative coronavirus test upon entering the country, as well as the need to stay self-isolated for 10 days upon arrival. It comes amid concerns about a new, more infectious strain of the virus emerging in both Brazil and South Africa. Vaccines Minister Nadem Zahawi is warning against booking holidays abroad for the next couple of months. It's too early to uh, begin to uh, uh, speculate on uh, summer holidays. I think the, the right thing to do now is to continue with our vaccination drive on Saturday. I think we got to half a million um, actual jabs uh, of the first dose um, in a single day. Uh, we continue to, to make great progress. At some point, we will um, you know, break that link between infections and severe infection, hospitalisation and death. It is a race against death. Australia became one of the first countries to introduce mandatory hotel quarantines in March. The practice is also observed in places like China and New Zealand. Coming up, concerns over the amount of single-use plastic being sold by leading supermarkets. And a top golfer says he's worried about the chances of defending his Olympic title. This is the Lunchtime News from Radio News Hub.
Were you persuaded to buy solar panels with assurances they would pay for themselves or even make you money? If those promises haven't come true and you bought your panels in the past six years with a loan from Barclays, Shawbrook, Creation or Ecano, then you may be entitled to thousands of pounds in compensation. At Solar Claims UK, many of our clients receive their settlement within four weeks. So text SOLAR to 60777. Text SOLAR to 60777 now. You don't need a claims management company to make a claim and if unsuccessful, you can refer it free to the financial ombudsman. Coming up, tributes to Frank Lampard as he departs Chelsea. But first, almost a million tonnes of single-use plastic is still making its way through the tills at the UK's leading retailers every year. That's according to two leading environmental groups who say supermarkets aren't doing enough to cut down on plastics in the products they sell. Carl Hartley has more on this. 900,000 tonnes of plastic packaging was sold by some of the UK's biggest retailers in 2019. That's the weight of about 90 Eiffel Towers. Greenpeace and the Environmental Investigation Agency have put together the figures. They also found about 1.6 billion plastic bags for life were issued by the top brands. That's about three times as many as single-use bags. Elsewhere, they found 2.5 billion plastic water bottles were sold or given away. They're now concerned that much of the waste isn't being recycled, instead ending up in the ocean. Because it got so thin from so much plastic that it's trying to digest and it can't digest it. It's eating the lining out of her stomach, trying to digest what little food she can. That's a marine biologist working in the Philippines, dissecting a dead whale, which was found with 40 kilograms of plastic in its stomach. It's thought there are now more than five trillion pieces of plastic waste floating in oceans worldwide. Greenpeace and the EIA are now calling on supermarkets to do more to cut back on single-use plastics in their products and to put more pressure on brands to do their bit to reduce waste. Here's Christina Dixon. She works for the Environmental Investigation Agency. There's hardly anywhere on this planet, from the Arctic to our rivers, that aren't affected by plastic pollution. I think everyone's seen these statistics about there being more plastic in the ocean than fish. It might be alarmist, but it's a reality that we're facing if we don't fundamentally address plastic pollution at the root now. The supermarkets have a really important role to play in thinking about plastic packaging and how it can be reduced. And that's by packaging redesign, it's by looking at the introduction of reuse and refill systems, and also bringing customers on a journey by showing them why it's simple to go packaging free and reduce plastic. Now the survey found where trawls had done the most to cut back on packaging in 2019, while Iceland had done the least. Iceland say that claim is misleading as it operates on a much smaller scale than other retailers. Now, tributes to a departing manager in the Premier League. Here's Paul Rayleigh with the sports. Jose Reno has paid tribute to his former player, now turned manager Frank Lampard, after he was sacked by Chelsea. I'm always sad when a colleague loses his job. And of course, Frank is not just a colleague. He's uh, an important person in my in my career, so of course I feel I feel sorry with it. Lampard departs Stamford Bridge, leaving the Blues ninth in the Premier League. Former PSG boss Thomas Tuchel is expected to take over. Well, Mourinho was speaking after his Spurs side were 4-1 winners against Wickham in the FA Cup. Tottenham are back in action on Thursday when they play Champions Liverpool. Pep Guardiola is convinced Sergio Aguero could still be the man to fire Manchester City to glory this season. City's record goalscorer has made just three starts this term and is currently sidelined with COVID-19. Next, Justin Rose admits he's concerned about his chances of defending his Olympic title and the prospect of the Tokyo Games being staged at all. But tournament organisers last week revealed the Games have the full support of Japanese officials. There are concerns, though, that rising Covid cases in the country could call the event off once again. And John Bateman has played down his chances of him becoming the next England captain and singled out his old teammate Josh Hodgson as the best man for the job. The retirement of Sean O'Loughlin means England boss Sean Wayne will have to find a new leader ahead of the 2021 World Cup. This has been the Lunchtime News from Radio News Hub with me, Matt Soans. You can find plenty more on the stories we're covering today at radionewshub.com. But for now, thanks for listening. 